talked about that. So right here we've got, so we can all see here, there's Goethe statue, Goethe revolution, and Goethe. The revolution is something that won't come for two, one, one maybe uh, two centuries. So here is the Goethe statue. Built in 1784, he proved that humans evolved and metamorphosized from animals for his discovery of the intermaxillary born in animals. Before that year, people were said, ah, humans are different than animals because they don't have an intermaxillary bone. So he went searching around in whale bones and all this. He found the bone. So he, Darwin built on what he did. wrote this in 1809, that humans are chemicals. When we are induced to each other in systems, we react just like chemicals do. We're evolved in metamorphosized chemicals. And then Goethe, this is the Schiller Street in Chicago, Lakeshore Drive. That's Schiller, that's Goethe. And there is the Goethe Street, right there. And the Goethe statue was built in 1913. The Goethe statue is right here. So in four days, if you see this video, you want to come chill around Chicago. There's, I'll be here, at midnight toasting. That's why we're doing this crap video real fast, no uh, scripting. I scripted some in my head the last week, but that's where we're stand. And there's the. Uh, there's the lake right there, Lake Michigan. And also, let's see what we got here. There is me at the statue. It says here that Goethe is the mastermind of the German people. 1913. So correctly, most Americans don't understand this because basically we're re stupid in America. But once the French philosophy has trickled through to us, English philosophy has trickled to us, but German philosophy hasn't trickled through our minds, is that uh, we are chemicals. And the first and second law of thermodynamics apply to us, the reactions. But he did all this 200 years ago, so here's me, and there's me and Goethe right there. And there is my book that's based, Goethe. I penned this book in honor of Goethe as he, he wrote out this novel, Like Affinities 1809, and this is, boom, the phrase, the first textbook. So I'll be here at, I'll be at the Statue of Midnight doing a toast with some ice house beer, at least a six pack in every case, I'm not really planning a lot. Right. No 
Malcolm Gladwell, smart guy. He wrote The Tipping Point in 2000. Pretty influ influential for me. He took a lot of these uh, studies I didn't know about. And for example, micro second interactions between people. Whereas you don't, if you don't realize when you're talking to people in a group, you think about, we think about things in terms of seconds, but actually it's milliseconds. Or if you rise, raise an eyebrow or you, what your eyes goes this way, those are very powerful mechanistic steps in the reaction to people. So we wrote this book, Tipping Point, it was the highest selling book in the 2000s on Amazon. It's pretty powerful. Ellen Fisher, she's a leading love philosopher. When I, don't, when I mean love philosopher, I mean the science of love philosopher. She, she takes a lot of studies from anthropology. For example, Jane Goodall, who we'll look at shortly, in the chimpanzee war. She puts it all together. For example, she says, the theory is pretty crude, but at least she put out a theory. She put it to practice with when chemistry.com started out, tried to match people. She, met, she said there's four kinds of people. There's the dopamine people who are adventurers. There are the estrogen type people who are the negotiators. There are the testosterone type of people. And there are also the serotonin type of people who are confident. It's the confidence chemical. Whether they, these chemicals go up and down is kind of gives an indication of what type of person you are. And she matched people on chemistry.com back in 2008. I don't know if it was successful or not, but sometimes you have to take a step forward before you can take three, four steps back. Larry Elson. Basically, he's the guy who found Oracle. What's interesting about him is he's something in 2000, five years ago, he's, he's about the 10th richest person in the world, but he went from a high school dropout, dropped out of high school in 1977, and he founded Oracle with an investment of $1,200 $1, to build a database for the CIA and 2015, he was the fifth richest person in the world. So he's not really a philosopher, but for whatever reason, he's in the rankings. Ben Carson. Ben Carson, we all, he was the uh, guy who ran for president with Trump. Talked a lot of stupid shit out of his mouth when he was running presidency, but he's, some of his not so smart comments are mixed with intelligence. So we've already talked about him in the other ranking. He was in the 2014 ranking, he was the 21st smartest person ever. Now he is the 48th. But he was born to a, he was born in the ghetto in Detroit to a single mother, no father, he had him and his brother and his mother, and from that beginning his mother was illiterate, and she tricked him into educating himself by telling him he had, him and his brother had to write two, read two books per week, write a book report on each book, and she would pretend that she was grading them by putting checks. She would take the book reports, she would check out certain paragraphs, like she was grading them, even though she was, didn't understand English. And from that basis, he ended up being the youngest ever head of a neurosurgery department in America by, before age 30. And by age 30, he did this first successful uh, separation of conjoined twins. Not only that, he, in his political campaign, he was probed about his beliefs in religion and God. He believes in God. So he put it to the reporter. He says, uh, 
You know, I get a lot of grief out there. People say, how can you be a scientist and believe in God who created the earth? Obviously, they say, we developed from a puddle of promiscuous biochemicals. It's the same stuff that Goethe did in 1809, over 200 years ago. So America is way, way, uh, we're still in dark ages. Uh, and if you believe in anything other than that, you are a moron. So here we are. Uh, he's basically saying that everybody in America is a moron, which is true. If you can't explain this, why we develop a puddle of promiscuous biochemicals and understand that chemicals are not alive, hydrogen is not alive, oxygen is not alive, water is not alive, carbon dioxide is not alive, DNA is not alive, RNA is not alive, coenzyme A is not alive, all the stuff that builds up to us is none of this stuff is alive. It's, it's, uh, life is a religious concept. So, but he, he sees the issue here. He says, well, uh, if you believe anything other than that, you are more. Uh, can you tell me how something came from nothing? And of course they can't, okay? I can't do that either. You can, it's called the infinite regress. We're always going to be regressing back to the farther and farther back. And uh, they say, well, we don't understand everything. I say, okay. No problem. I'm just going to give you that there's something, and now you're going to tell me there's a Big Bang, and it comes into perfect order. Entropy, colloquially speaking, is a measure of order. Uh, it's, it's what's called uh, dumbed down thermodynamics means low entropy is ordered, high entropy is disordered. Very complicated subjects. It's not exactly, when you, whenever you read about it, you're not getting the full picture. So that we can predict 70 years hence when a comet is coming and that kind of precision. And they say, well, yeah. And I say, but don't you also believe in entropy? So here we are. You can either believe in entropy. He's giving us the alternatives here. Believe in entropy or you can believe in God. Believe in God or believe in entropy. Those are your two options right now. If you're coming up at 2020, 65 AE or Elementium, you've got to choose between those things. God or entropy. He's what ways drawing a line on the carpet. And he said this four years ago in 2016. So he says, don't you also believe in entropy that Things move towards a state of disorganization. This is what's called dumb, dumbed down thermodynamics. When you read the original publications of Clausius, you understand that uh, the universe does not move towards a state of disorganization. It moves towards what's called a state of increasing equivalence values of all uncompensated transformations. And that's a mathematical thing that's found up in Clausius. It means that when molecules react within a system, when it uh, expands versus when it contracts, there's a difference in the energy. We can't digress in that right now. They say, yeah, of course I believe in that, the dumb idiots. If, you're, if you believe in this, you're a straight idiot. And they say, well, yeah, so how does that work? And they say, well, we don't ever understand everything. We do understand this part. You can just Google lip thems, human chemical thermodynamics. You'll get the uh, explanation. But I say, I'm not going to be critical of you, not a problem. You're entitled to believe what you believe, even though it requires a lot more faith than what I believe. So he's telling the truth. It's easier to believe in God than to believe in the, the scientific part of entropy that hasn't been distilled to the, public, the populace. He says, let everybody believe what they want. 
So number Jacob Leachman. Can't really dig into him, but he's H fat 52 means he's a human free energy theorist 52. He's been blogging about free energy and empathy. His sister has uh, some kind of empathy, attention deficit empathy uh, issues. And so he writes about empathy in terms of thermodynamics, which addresses the stuff that Carson's talking about there. Warren Buffett, he, he's a smart guy. We talked about them already. Just quickly, when he was, before he turned 18, he entered the nor the uh, entered business school, and he already read, read 100 books on business. He, he said he was smarter than all the professors. He was born out of the Depression, and he learned the books of how to make money in America. So, James Lovelock, he's the oldest guy on the list, 101. And when he was uh, working for NASA, he said to find life on Mars, we should look for an entropy reduction, which is just what Carson was talking about. Philip Ball, he wrote Critical Mass. And he wrote all these books. Why? Society is a Complex Matter. This is his big book, Critical Mass, Unnatural. And after he graduated, got his PhD in chemical physics, he started lecturing, touring the world, lecturing on why social physics needs to be part of the universities. But he experienced resistance like I experienced resistance when I tour and lecture in universities. He's a smart guy. I talked to him. He tweets a lot. Another page found in Google, basically. Say about him, Thomas Sowell. He is ranker of greatest minds eight, ninety nine currently. He's an economist and social theorist. He watches a Black Lives Matter video. He's very intelligent. What he says. Klaus Wiedkind. He's the guy behind the sweaty T-shirt study. You haven't heard about this. Bunch of guys wear t-shirts for three days. He put the t-shirts in bags and he had women smell the t-shirts for sexual attractiveness. He found that women are most sexually attracted to the guys who had the most dissimilar major histocompatibility complex, or MHC, which means they were most attracted to the guys who had the most dissimilar immune system. They knew this in animals, but he was the first one to experimentally prove it with humans. See, there's a study over here. Pretty famous stuff, if you ask me, especially in evolutionary psychology. Jane Goodall, she's the one who studied the chimpanzee war in person from 70 to 75 in the Gombe National Reserve. So chimpanzees, they split into these troops. And they split into three different packs, three different systems. And she, she studied how they war with each other. For example, she writes about how there's a rock right here, and there was some kind of altercation that's explained in one of Helen Fisher's books, and how the, uh, the males from this troop and the alpha male got stronger over here, and he, he broached into this troop, and he was smashing one of the females and ripping her apart. And anyways, this, all this is a good uh, models for understanding uh, human social Interactions, for example, war in terms of systems. This is the system, this is the boundary. We can understand uh, thermodynamically why things happen. Robert Sterner calculated the molecular formula for a human in 2000, 22 element, two years before me. Smart guy. It's called, it's called what Talon Kuhn calls. Uh, Paradigm change when people independently arrive at the same thing. Joseph Stepanek is Croatian. He theorizes like I do in terms of social systems are defined by the energy and gives free energy and the entropy. 
and the forces that act, act, act on social systems. Mark Duran, a better, published 1973, The Strength of the Weak Ties, highest, most cited publication in the history of sociology. And he said that he interviewed people and how they found their jobs. And he found out that people found their jobs through weak ties. And he modeled, he understood this from his chemistry class that weak ties are like hydrogen bonds. Strong covalent bonds are like your family ties. So most people, and he scales down into a social model that people are have strong ties, they have weak ties, and they also have absent ties where there's no bond. Very influential paper. Thomas Wallace, H547, you'll have to check on him. David Huang, he published this in 2001. He's the first person to ever talk about uh, chem people chemically reacting graphically in terms of energy uh, reaction diagrams. So here's the free energy, here's the reaction progress. Reactants, products, happy, not happy, unhappy, above, the equilibrium line, absorbing energy, happy, below the equilibrium line, a releasing free energy. Smart guy. He's actually a Yale neurointensivologist at, or at Yale right now. Richard Dawkins, he's like super smartest person, rank of greatest minds, 339. He published The God Delusion. He published The Selfish Gene. Let's skip over, everybody knows him. Jeff Bezos, founder of Amazon. Gregory Perlman, solved the pull and carry conjecture and turned out a million dollars in cash prizes because he wasn't interested in all that. Cool guy. Joseph, Peter Joseph, author of the 2007 Zeitgeist. Woke up a lot of people in terms of the mythology behind Jesus and Horace. Stuart Kaufman, smart guy. He's the guy who formulated the idea of what's called autocatalytic closure, which is kind of like perpetual motion at the chemical level to explain life, which means that one of the products goes back and is a catalyst and triggers the reactants and you get the circle. And that's how he explains life started. So this is one of the hurdles I had to get through to understand that life doesn't exist. Smart guy, but wrong, but intelligent nonetheless. George Tyler, he's the first person to make a table of humans uh, in terms of free energy. This is the, N is the size of the work group. And he says that certain work groups have different free energies. Very forward thinking. He did this in his 1989 thermodynamic model of manpower systems. He did, bus, he did his mate selection study where he interviewed him and his female graduate student, interviewed women on how a scale of one to Seven on how offended they would be to an outright sexual proposition to have sex with some random stranger. All they knew was their occupation. So the person was a homeless man, he'd be very upset. If the person was a medical student, he'd be at least upset. So he, he, he writes his book, uh, The Evolution of Desire, and explains that uh, you can explain all of these sexual reaction mechanisms mechanistically in terms of if you get this better job your mechanism goes higher by this increment it went very influentially Jurgen Memke's already talked about him a lot Adrian Delane, she's the first one who did these mixed Chemical, physical chemistry with Prigozhin thermodynamics with Darwinian selection between her species A and B, they form A, B, and it goes over these really evolutionary reaction diagrams.
Gary Greenberg. Uh, he wrote Hunter Wanna Miss the Bible, very influential to me. Tim Berners Lee is ranked up pretty high. Start the internet. Ina Lee. She is she's the one I wanted to make a video, but they deleted her video. I was going to play a video. But she became famous for her 2000 film, horror film submission, 10 minute film, uh, criticizing the treatment of women in Islam with, with scripts, with uh, texts from the Quran written on women's body. And it was 10 minute film, taking the stuff that's written in the Quran and saying, look, this is what you want women to do in Islam. So three months after she wrote and did the voiceover for this, the director of the film was shot eight times, had his head cut off, and there was a note stabbed to his body that said, she's next. That takes some big, big brains in my book. She talks about when she's being attacked about this stuff. She, was, she grew up in Somalia, went to Canada, or England and Canada, came to America. She talks about what democracy and freedom is. In America, we take it for granted, but she just, over here she says, uh, talks about how she read uh, Tocqueville and said, you grew up in freedom and you can spit on freedom because you do not know what it is not to have freedom. If you, watch, if you could have watched the video, it just makes me wish there was more intelligent women like this. It's just a shame. Uh, Wozniak, even Apple II, Tom Stoppard, he, he was the first person to take Goethe's lactophinities and make it into a play. Elon Musk, everybody knows who he is. Eric Mueller, he's one of the, this, this article right here is one of the inspirations between, behind the 2005 founding of the Journal of Human Thermodynamics. It's called Human Societies. Curious application of thermodynamics. So you're going to want to check that out. Sam Harris, he wrote The End of Faith. Smart guy because he started penning this book the day after 9 11. And he was the guy who sparked the New Atheism movement. I mean, who woke up the day after 9 11 and had their vision right in front of them? Not me. I mean, my vision was a lot before that, but this guy's just pretty cool in terms of that one thing. Bill Gates, Microsoft, here's the uh, Gates model of uh, humans in terms of chemical reactions. Paul Allen, Bill Gates, boom. Microsoft's activation energy barrier. Products. A $350 billion company. Ward Cunningham, the guy who invented the wiki, which is the stuff that this video is based on right now. Gotta give him props. Uh, all right, this is Alan Guth. I didn't put his name in right now, but he's a this is typo too. He's ranked in, I guess. He's ranked in within Ranker Creators Minds. Becker 160, 158, and he invented the inflation theory of the Big Bang. Let's just look at that so we can all. Get on the same page here. So here's the Big Bang. He's the guy who invented this whole thing that space and time inflates in this time period. Uh, photons are formed. Nuclear fusion begins. And down at the end, we, we come out of here. Francis Coppola. Not only.